Hey up lads and lads, Danfi here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today, I actually managed to pick up the S Levy 9 um, a few days ago now, and I've been testing it out, and it was the one Corvette I believe I was missing um, out of like most of the ships where I did a little sort of ship guide on what to sort of use it on and uh, how to set it up with the uh, the modules and stuff like that. So I now have it. I've now been testing it for a few days, and I think I'm in a good position to sort of talk about it now properly, um, and hopefully not lead you too far astray. So it is. It, it's a very good ship if you can keep it alive, um, and its initial burst damage potential, especially because of the strategy, is. It's pretty absurd, actually. Um, these things can absolutely chunk through stuff like nobody's business. And, um, yeah, because of that, really, really quite nice to use these. Um, I will definitely be looking to try and fit these into my main fleet a little bit more uh, than I currently do. I, I'm going to have to work someone out because you need to get some either Jaegers in or some Guardian Dual Purpose in, really, to run these. Um, I mean, if you've got Marshall Crooks, uh, those can also work, but I do run Solar Whales on that side of things. So, anyway, the S Levy 9, uh, it, like I said, ridiculous. It's got stupid damage potential. It comes with 1,180 damage per hit. Okay, duration's crap. You know, it, it's not particularly, it's not like a good DPM boat. Uh, as you can see, 3,760 is actually not that bad if you compare it in, say, um, I think my Solar Defender is actually upgraded at the moment. It's this little bit of a awkward one. It's about 6,400. But you, you can definitely get it up that uh, high anyway. Uh, but yeah, like I said, the initial burst damage and alpha that these can actually provide is significant enough that I think they're probably worth running in most of your meta fleets. Um... But yeah, so what I personally recommend is starting actually off with the propulsion system here. Uh, this is where the majority of your survivability is going to be. Um, that being said, these things do seem to like to get targeted pretty quickly, and that's including having screens and stuff in front of them. Um, I don't know why exactly what's going on there, but in my testing, these have been shot before my screen sometimes and some weird stuff going on. It could be due to the fact that uh, it sort of fires like two, I think it's two torps and then goes back to the carrier and then comes back out or something like that. Maybe might might be messing uh, something up with the, the targeting priorities. Um, anyway, so with that being said, highly recommend at least picking up the two evasion. You could argue dropping one of the evasions here because uh, you'll lose 8% evasion, but you'll be picking up the close combat assault strategy here, uh, which is when flying to attack the mid-row target, there's a 45% chance of ignoring enemy anti-aircraft weapons pre-targeting effect. The issue I have with picking up this strategy is unless people are running battle cruisers uh, that aren't the Spear or the SD-59 with the strategy to put up front row, uh, You've also got the Solar Whale, which is only mid-row as well. And you don't find that this can trigger too often. But if you know what your uh, enemy is running in their fleet, and they are running Solar Whales and likes of that, and that's what you're primarily targeting, um, definitely try pick this up. Actually, really does add to survivability, but it is very situational, uh, I find. So in my opinion, I'm going to recommend the double evasion because it's just going to be a better all around. You have four slots here, so I also remember, uh, recommend picking up the shortened BAT for the primary weapon of the aircraft by 4%. I also recommend uh, picking up the reduce the flight time of the reciprocal aircraft because like I said, this thing goes back and forth quite a bit, so reducing flight time actually increases the DPM. Uh, obviously not within game or on paper, uh, but it does actually increase the DPM. After that, in my opinion, the weapon lock-on times, not bad here because 
lock on happens quite a lot. Whenever you return to carry, you lose lock on this thing, so they're gonna have to relock it. So increasing the lock on time actually adds to survivability quite a bit. But you can go triple health or double health and enemy lock on. It is completely up to you on that one. Um, I'm personally been running it with the triple health, um, but I have tested it with a uh, weapon lock on time and it works just as well. Um, the issue with the lock on time one I find is if you do come up against players that have a good amount of tech points and that kind of thing going, uh, you're going to find that the lock on times that they're kind of hitting at that sort of point when they're like high TP, um, they, they're going to lock on regardless relatively quickly and the lock on time increases doesn't hurt them too badly in my opinion. Then, last but not least, is when you start working on the weapon system. Now, the weapon systems is an odd one because it's one of the few times where we do have things like cooldown and I'm not actually going to tell you to pick those up. They are nice, but the fact that it's got such a long duration, the cooldown's four seconds, and it's more about it flying backwards and forwards that's really hurting its DPM, uh, you might as well just try and get the most possible alpha out of this thing uh so we are running double damage mods here i sorry i would recommend picking up at least the lock on radar enhancement first i personally like running the large target correction this is just increasing the hit chance even further there is an argument to drop this one though because it is only cruises and up uh so it's not massively useful but at the same time it Added, crit, added a chance to hit is always pretty good. After that, you're going for your double damage output. This is just really, really good in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with either. We're always trying to grab the damage on this because of that massive damage per hit. Um, each one of these giving you 10% extra damage. You're getting an extra 100 and something odd damage for each one of these uh, you max out and it brings that DPM up really quite quickly. As you can see here, just like a basic, um, just a 2% increase is actually plus 76. So you can imagine how much damage these are really actually gonna be providing overall. Um, actually, I can even just show it off a little bit. So we're now at 4K. We pick up the last one as well, and we check the alpha here, and we're at 1400 damage per hit. It's actually really quite nice. I do also recommend picking up the strategy on this one. The first two rounds of attacks by your primary weapon towards enemy ships will gain physical armor penetration effects after the battle begins. This allows it to ignore armor. I haven't managed to calculate how much armor it actually manages to ignore, but it, it's enough that you probably want to be running it. I've seen this thing hitting solar whales now. I've hit, seen it hitting spears as well, and the difference this made was quite substantial when I removed it and tested it without and when I put it on and tested it with. So I do recommend putting this on at any given point and they're high armor sort of carriers and battle cruisers there. So anything like IOs and that kind of thing, this thing really, really damn hurts. So bear that in mind, you wanna be running the strategy here and that brings you up to five if you go for the double, um, for the double hit rates. After that, I actually quite like taking the target uh, fast target lock for the target uh, selection time reduction. So mixing up all my words this morning. Uh, this is going to help you target faster. Pretty simple. It means you get your DPM out quicker, that big alpha strike out faster, and then you can return back to carrier, reload, and go back out. After that, personally, I'm picking up the 4% uh, chance to deal an additional 5% crit damage. When I mentioned earlier that you can drop the cruiser hit rate here, it's due to the fact that there is also another crit damage mod here, and that's where you could potentially drop this hit rate mod to pick up the extra crit damage mod. And that will be all of your slots filled. Again, like I said, we are not touching the cooldown here at all. It doesn't really help this ship um, all that much, which is a, a little bit unfortunate. So you could end up something uh, akin to uh, I don't know if I got the tech points for this. I should have the tech points for this. I won't be able to put the strategy on at the moment. Uh, you'll have something that looks a bit like that, plus the strategy. And yeah, really quite good. 
high DPM and like I said, hits like a truck. Carrier wise for this thing, um, there's a couple of options really. In my opinion, uh, if we go down to cruisers, go to Jaeger. Jaeger's gonna be quite nice uh, and that's due to, you know, super capital uh, strategy on it. It's gonna force it to attack those carriers and those capital ships and it reduces the attack duration and all that, which is great. Uh, it holds four as well. It's pretty uh, CP efficient for the amount that it's carrying in. So the Jaeger is going to be really good in that. The Marshall Crooks will also be pretty good in this regard. Uh, same reason. It's got um, anti super caps uh, strategy on it. And a little outlier that I quite liked. Um, it was a little bit varied in testing. But for the highest potential damage, um, putting it on the Guardian dual purpose actually worked out really quite nicely. And that is because you can get the triple damage mods here, bringing it up to like, I think it's around 2k. Um, yeah, I think it's about 2k per torpedo fired. Um, so yeah, it hits like an absolute truck at that point it's incredible uh the issue with this is you may find that your levies start targeting things like frigates and crew uh frigates and destroyers which has a hard time hitting most of the time though it is still going for cruisers and above and this triple damage mod actually works out really quite nicely um so yeah definitely consider the guardian dual purpose for this one as well um Guardian dual purpose. It's not too bad on the solar whale either. Uh, if you run the solar whale setup that uh, I'm currently running, where you're running the uh, healing mods, the ship maintenance system for the extra 15% flight time and weapon cooldown. Uh, and then obviously within the Corvette dock hangar itself, you're running an additional 40% cooldown and flight time reduction. So. This actually works out really quite nicely, but again, similar to the Garden Dual Purpose, you are giving up the strategy to prioritize uh, super caps. But that being said, it's a lot of damage output potential on a solar whale, a lot of damage potential on the uh, Guardian Dual Purpose. Um, I think in the majority of the time, you might find this works a little bit better uh, than having it against uh, super caps only without quite as many of the uh, cooldown buffs. But I think that's being said for pretty much any of the Corvettes in general, to be fair. It does also prioritize uh, carriers and stuff like that, so you shouldn't worry too much. So there we go. That is just a nice little guide to help you guys out with the Levy uh, 9, the S-Levy 9. Still a weird looking ship. It's literally just torpedoes strapped to an engine, basically. Um, but yeah, definitely works really nicely loads of damage um it's not quite selling the defender level um and that's due to the fact that its dpm doesn't really get particularly high we can see here we're at four and a half thousand if you're in a very short battle its dpm keeps up or betters the cellular defender as soon as you're going into that sort of four five minute range that cellular defender is going to start out dpming these uh, pretty consistently as well, so be aware of that. Um, but yeah, they will shorten your uh, your your time in battle anyway because of the amount of damage these things will be dishing out. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.